Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game's up on the tabletop. Well, no, actually, it is a top five video. Our first no, wait, top it's not five. No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's our top five video for the five games of the year. I brought Josh and Max here. Max has been uh, joining us regularly on the stream now, and uh, Josh has been here for quite some time. And they're going to talk about their games, their favorite games of the year. Uh, this list is going to be limited to the games that are games we played that might be prototypes uh, that might be coming out next year. Or you have an opportunity to back them or post back them, and or they just came out this year they were published this year those, those are fully published games for the most part for my list they're all fully published games except for one but you can get it sort of and uh, I think for the most part you guys are along the same lines as well Pretty close, yeah. what we're gonna do is we're just going to go along the lines here I'll start and then we'll go Josh and Max and we'll talk about our games from five all the way down to number one and uh, you guys ready to do it Let's do this. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and begin with my number five. And my number five is actually The Crew, The Quest for Planet Nine. This is by Cosmos. It is a trick-taking game. And the objective of The Crew is you're going to want to play tricks. You, Everybody will play a card from their hand. And certain players will need to win tricks. You don't always want to win in this game. This is a cooperative game, a fully cooperative game. And you might want to get the number two and I might want to get the number five, and your two might be yellow, my five might be blue. In order for us to win the game, we both have to accomplish our objectives. If somebody else wins our trick that we need to win, we lose the game when we start over. It has a campaign mode as well. Basically what happens is during the campaign, you will progressively get more and more difficult challenges, more objectives are going to come out, we're going to have more cards that we need to accomplish in gathering tricks, and unique tokens are going to be produced that will affect when we can play tricks and how we can play tricks. It is a quick game, it's a cheap game, and it has high quality components for what it is, mainly just cards, and it is a lot of fun. It's a game that I will be keeping my collection for a long time. It fits into the categories of The Mind and other such small card games, I and like it's uh, something that I haven't seen before, a trick-taking game that's also a cooperative game, which is nice. I like, I like trick-taking games, I like the competitive aspects of them, like the main game being so hearts. Yeah. yeah, and this one here is a cooperative variant of those games. So if you already played a trick-taking game, if you have trick-taking games, this is one you can pick up that's slightly different in your collection that I think you'll enjoy. Personally for me, definitely one of my favorite games, a top five of 2020, The Crew. <laughs> a very good game. Okay. okay, so my five, I really tried to narrow it down, but mine is a tie between Boss Battle and Super Fantasy Brawl. Now, it has been a little while since I played Super Fantasy Brawl, but that is the, um, essentially an area defense kind of game. Uh, it is competitive, but can also be played teams. So that one actually has a little more versatility for how you want to play with your friends. Uh, that one actually really reminds me of League of Legends. So if you like that style of play where you're moving around the map and you have a team, you know, or if you're playing individually, I guess it's a little bit different then. For Fantasy Brawl? Yeah. Oh, okay, not Boss Monster. No, uh, no, the, the Boss Fantasy Battle. Brawl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brawl is definitely a tactics game. Yeah, the, um, that one has great miniatures. I like the articulation. There's good detail to them, like they're really high quality. And then just to speed things up, because I know I'm limited on uh, how much I want to talk about. Each game is like tied. I couldn't decide. They're just, they're good. So that was Boss Battle. It's by Mythic Games, and I think it's two to six players. Yeah, and it's a big box game, so, you know, it's a It's massive, yeah. but it's not a huge amount of, like, cards and stuff like that. Yeah, like, it's each, not each, super hard to learn, either. Each character gets a certain amount of cards, and it's like six to eight cards, and those are the cards used throughout the game. tactics for, like, yeah, how you move, where you move, what your area of effect is for your attacks, stuff like that. Very really. straightforward tactics game, too. Yeah. It's one of those Easy to pick up gateway play. tactics games, yeah. I would even say. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. You haven't played that one yet, have you? No, I have not, but from hearing for the amazing review Josh has given for it, it is definitely something I'd be into. I, I got to play as a tiger with like swords and stuff. That, that's right up my alley, so yeah. It, it's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Mythic Games mm -hmm. does a wonderful quality of components. Even if you don't enjoy the games, it you get really cool just tons to of miniatures like to paint. You get tons of components you can use for D and D. Like there, there's almost no reason to not pick up a uh, a copy of it. a copy yeah. of, of anything like from Mythic because yeah. you can utilize their games and their assets and stuff like that in great, a lot of great stuff. production value. Um, yeah. I personally like almost every game I've played of theirs, and uh, I think that they're all worth picking up for their own reasons as well. Yeah, okay. Definitely. And uh, this one specifically is one I will have a video, video review for shortly. They have so the production we, we quality played, out here. We uh, did play the prototype. prototype a while yes. ago, but now it is out. It, it is, is available. available. So, yeah. yeah. So the other one that was my tie for number five is Boss Battle. And that is a 1v all the card game. 
that honestly is a blast. I was a big dragon. I got to fight. Um, it was you and Callie, I think. And then you had an NPC third. You kind of like agreed to play then yes. uh, together. So yeah, the, um, that one did fund on Kickstarter. So that will be out at some point in time, probably in 2021. I yeah, think. you can play cooperatively against the boss. You can play competitively with a one versus many system. There's like... Uh, there's, there's defenses, there's, there's attacks. different oh, positions there's that you can so place your character's abilities in, and the boss will actually be able to attack your, you know, less defended side or more well, defended side. Boss responding for okay, where can I hit them? Where can I hit me? You know, blocking. Great I art. Love, yeah, I love big scary some, bosses. Yeah, mixed tactics, so lots of replay value. I know with mine, I managed to surprise all of you with all my shields that I had. You just thought, okay, I'm just defending. But then I flipped all my shields in one huge attack. Basically, it, all my shields. It's definitely just harder cool. when playing as the heroes for the first couple times. Yeah, you need to learn your heroes very well. The boss typically mm -hmm. has just scary stuff. E you have to easier deal to pick up. Yeah, worked out really well. So those are my number five. Cheater. <laughs> cheater. <laughs> I don't know if I would say it's cheating when you have great games that literally make it to where it is a tie between the two and you can't really draw that line. Get this that Mother Teresa over here. Like, Goodness. Like, trying to help me out. He does vote for me pretty often in the stream, so I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Except for when I'm playing and then I beat him. <laughs> What's your number <laughs> five, Max? What do you got for us? My number five was actually a game that we just recently played earlier this week. It is this guy right here. Holly. Holly. Festival of Colors. Colors. It's a fun little three-dimensional game, multiple platforms. Each character starts with their own token in a corner of the room. You get cards that get dished out to you. you get, out of the three cards you have, you pick one, put tokens down for your colors according to the cards. You have to try to make combinations of colors on your side of the field to gain points in the end. And as you go up, the point values get higher. Beautiful game too. It is. Vincent Dutre is a great artist, and this is uh, no exception to that rule. Well, it lives up to your festival oh, color. Yeah. It has lots of color. Yeah. Puzzly game, color. aggressive in some ways. Um, you can play aggressive or not aggressive. The objective mm. is to score as many points for each piece of color that you have. Um, the more points you can get, the better. I think three and or four, if you have a special rule, yeah. is where it's at. But yeah, it's, it's a great game. I, I thought about that one as Fast well. Play, easy pick it's up. definitely one of my top two or three puzzle games of the year as well. Also say. available right now. It I actually is. already ordered a deluxe version of it on the website right now. So is this a deluxe version or no? Uh, no, it's a regular. Oh yeah. wow, there is an actual yeah, deluxe. Yeah, I got an upgraded uh, like little uh, figures to my character. I get a couple other things that are a little nicer. Plastic if nothing aesthetic. else, all Plastic the publishers like, should be happy sending me games because at least Josh <laughs> backs them all whenever I get them. Not all. I mean, you got to be a good game, but this one I did pick up a copy, so yeah. That's it good. was a great, fun game mm -hmm. to enjoy. Callie Easy loved it. I think yeah. Callie or you, both of you guys, did very well. Won, yeah. I, no, I actually did that. Technically, he won, I think. Oh, because yeah, we had the last up. minute. Yeah. We realized that the so tokens had fallen. fallen when they shouldn't have. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was miserable at it, which is probably why puzzle games generally aren't on my top five list. But I do enjoy <laughs> puzzle games. I mean, Moonshell, my wife's yeah. game, is coming out next yeah. year, and uh, I do really enjoy that, even though I'm also well, it's a terrible puzzle at slash it. Puzzle slash, like, a, not set builder, but I don't know what to call it. Where you it's like a match three game. Kind of, yeah. yeah. It's like match three. It's so, almost kind of like Puzzle and Tetris. Holly kind of Festival style. of Colors this is by Floodgate, by the way, and it plays two to four players. Mm, great game. All right, number four. We'll speed it along here so we yeah. get through everybody's. Uh, this one this here is, is called. Yeah, is this number four for you as well? Number three. Oh. oh. The Dungeon Drop mm -hmm. dropped too deep. I guess we'll just talk about this one together. together. Yeah. Dungeon Drop is a great game. It's the, the original one came out last year, I believe. Or actually, I think it came out this year. It did come out this original, year. Yeah. This is the baby right here. And now Drop Too Deep is, um, the Kickstarter did fund, it is out, so it should be available at some point in time 2021 if you don't have it already. It's got tons of components. You're oh, dropping yeah. a dungeon down on the field, and it oh, looks like it's just a bunch of squares. Cubes, nice cubes. But it feels like a dungeon, and it feels mm -hmm. like you're gathering certain things and pulling certain monsters and dealing with certain things. You're working together cooperatively, you can go competitive, you have different bosses now in the expansion. There's so uh, many different sets you can toss in that the replay value is almost a This thick. got my seal of approval, and for a good reason. Dungeon That's Drop is, is an excellent game. I, I'm surprised it actually didn't give a seal of approval for the first game. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I did, but apparently I didn't. But oh. it definitely deserved it. It is a wonderful game. Uh, 
I'd be privileged to have it on the box somewhere, or even just in the rule book, as uh, to show you guys that I really, really enjoyed this game. It's an easy pickup. It's not very expensive. It's got all the right quality, all the right components, and it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, Dexterity. It fun. It's got uh, placement. You're going to be collecting strategy. For what you strategy. Take or don't take. And you'd be surprised with the amount of strategy that is in Dungeon oh, yeah. Drop. There is a. Well, I was ton I was very of it. overwhelmed and the, um, honestly kind of surprised by it. Like I underestimated how much you know, complexity there'd be in trying to take some of the sets and trying to really build your point values. It yeah, it was it was really awesome. And I think the it deluxe is. edition is the way to go too. There's a I, ton of great I components did. for that. Yeah. You did. You picked it up. He <laughs> also picked up this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that makes sense because it's it is that great of a game. Yeah. It's something that I would easily suggest to most people who are just out of the gateway area. Yeah, I got board so games. many add-ons. I got all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Number four. And number three. And now so you're up for your number four. Number four, actually, is Cowboy Bebop Space Serenade. Part of this, I do love the IP. And I don't want to say that I put this as my number um, my number four because of the IP alone. Because that alone, like, honestly, you can get lots of really good IPs that are just slapped on a game mechanic that we already know from other genres. And the IP doesn't really fit for what you're doing. Yeah. This is not the case. In this one, you actually have the characters you know from the anime, you have the, you know, the villains you're chasing after, and the way they've built the mechanics are around the idea of you being a bounty hunter, moving around the different spaces, and trying to capture villains and like you know, turn them in to get money. And it's cooperative in the sense that okay, you're trying to you know, knock down the villain, weaken them, you know, put them uh, under wraps together, but only one of you collects it. Yeah. So in that case, just like you know, the characters, they don't pool their bank accounts or anything. They're all trying to make their own money as are you in the game trying to get your own victory points. They work together up until the point where it comes to making money. Yeah. Then that's where the difference comes in. It's a deck builder. It has yeah. all the original characters from the anime. It feels like you're playing a certain certain missions yeah. that were taking place in the episodes. It's a fast linear deck builder. It, it's a game that made me jump in and try uh, Cowboy Bebop. I only watched an episode or two before, and when I got into this, I started checking it out. I, I enjoyed this game. It was a One solid game. It didn't... Favorite animes. It, it was, you know... It was a fun deck builder. It's definitely yeah. if you Space like the, if you like the IP, it's something I take a look at as well. Uh, it plays one to four players as well, so it has mm -hmm. that solo mode variant to it, and it's yeah. by Jap Anime Games. They do some great uh, anime games, games that really involve like animation, it. like uh, Sword Art Online, one of my personal favorite mm -hmm. dice rollers. That was a great game. You also, I believe, have yes, with this as this well. This one mm -hmm. is my number two. Oh, oh. well then. So go ahead and this give, is us a little, right now. give us a little spiel about Wait, it. What do you think? It? Yes. 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 This yes. is okay. released out right now. I enjoyed this one a lot because I thoroughly enjoyed the anime. I've watched it more times than I care to count, but that's besides the point. You haven't seen. So the you guys movie actually yet, like the I game, have not, not seen just the, the movie, movie right? but that's Correct. only just because I have not had the chance of finding it to where I can I can watch it. Don't be talking about place. the anime. This is about board games. <laughs> They're gonna start gushing no, about. If you're talking about like deck builders. Like I like Legends. Legends is fun. The, um, this is actually a little bit faster. Legends. Than you pick up, though. What's <laughs> Legends? Do you mean legendary? Legendary, that too. By upper yes. deck, yeah. It's been a while since I played it. Legends. This is this is what I have to work with people. I'm sorry. I, I'm <laughs> Legends. Drinking, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> what do you like about the game? The thing I liked a lot about the game was the fact that they took a lot of components from the actual shows, incorporated it very well into the car, into the cards for how you do your missions. Everything has different styles each of the characters have their different advantages and disadvantages you can work cooperatively with the other characters even if you're playing it solo every single character has a benefit even if they're not playing and if you have cooperative and you're playing with friends you can still use those same benefits but you can also talk to each other kind of work it so instead of going, together, you can use you know, each character can use the other's abilities, their A type, not their you know their B type, the more strong one. But you can use the, the second or the main sorry, you can use the main abilities, not the secondary. So even the NPC, you can move around and, and make use of them. Yeah. The characters have abilities, and yeah. those abilities you can utilize, and they can work together in tandem depending on the cards that you play. Yes. Yeah. Cowboy Bebop Space Serenade. If you want to pick it up, link down below your number. That that was my four. How about that was you? my number two. You got a four. Yeah, you your, got your four now too. This is your what? Nothing. No, not no your, oh yeah. I enjoyed no, it. Your, your overlap with me was dungeon drop. That's, that's right. right. What's your number four? My number four was a game that I was one of my first few that I played with you guys mm. called Rocket Cats. Oh my gosh! Yes, Rocket Cats. Oh, that's Rocket fun. Cats. Really fun play. Was so much fun. It was cute as hell, and literally you have kittens attacking each other with all manner of weapons, 
all manner of powers trying to cause absolute destruction and mayhem. It's a, it's a, it's a game in which you're placing cards down, <laughs> flipping. Simultaneous card reveal with a movement. It kind of feels like... Um, you have to predict a lot. You have to second, uh, kind of second guess, like, hey, where do you think people are going to be and, you know, aim your attacks accordingly. So and attacks it's, it's have by that game uh, by Steve Jackson, that original robot game where you flip over and you're moving your robot ricochet robots. I think that's why it is. Ricochet robots. I'm sure the comments will oh, torture me if I'm wrong. Yeah, that's been awesome to play that. Ricochet that robots. And there's yeah. also another one called Robo Rally as well. That's the Steve Jackson one. But it's similar to that with cats, and it has pasted pasties that you put on them, like see through pasties, and you move the cats around, <laughs> and the bombs are flying everywhere. Yeah, and it's rockets, also bombs, lasers, two D side scrolling, which is a lot of yeah. fun as well. Like no, that one's like by deep, Darren. Deep, I believe deep, it plays down. I think it's like what, four to like, like eight or twelve. Four or to twelve or something. It's a really four to eight. Yeah. Four four to eight? I think but, you play more. Can yeah, you more. I mean yeah. if you, you wanted to you could essentially just take two of those games, put them together and you can put sixteen people on one map. It would be insane. Well, the, the question is there could how work. much room would you have to do much? At that point I might question how many players you have on because like yeah there's like you're stuck. Like, hey, it would be an absolute insanity game because everybody would be getting hit all over the place. First two rounds would just be mayhem of, you know. Every, it would be all kinds of It's a nutty game, yeah. If you like yeah. games that involve a hidden movement to a certain extent, it's not hidden movement. I keep thinking, forgetting the mechanic what it's called, but it's simultaneous card flipping and then you're also going to move. Um, like I said, the kind comments like will just destroy me for not remembering this. Delayed attacking, um, almost. Programming, pro programmable movement. That's programmable there it is. movement. There that's that's it the is. one. That's what it you is. Got I it. should have the knowledge for this stuff. It's like I've been doing this for years. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> that's that. It's yeah, four <laughs> years now, I believe. Playing for, I don't know, even know years how long. Years. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Rocket Cats is a great game. Link as well in the description. Good choice. Good choice. That's a, that's a good game. It, it was on Kickstarter. Just funded. So you have to pick it up post-backing or when it comes out, which might be next year. But we played it this year on stream, so it counts. Yeah. Close enough. Yes, it does. Our number three, except for the people who already got their number threes done. I already said my number three. So it's so. going to be us two, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And luckily, I don't have any crossovers with anybody, except for when uh, well, Josh crossed over with me, but I got to talk about it, so I'm not going to skip any. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this baby. Look at that. There you go. That is a massive box. Yeah, it's it called is. Imperial Spells and Steam. It's by Level 99 Games and it plays two to four players. If you like Ticket to Ride, this game kills it in my opinion. Beautiful, massive, tons of components, tons of quality, very simple game to play. You're moving stuff around, you're placing stuff on the board, like basically making trains go around the board, just like Ticket to Ride in certain aspects. But you have players that have different abilities. You're going to be customizing your board, which improves your abilities. Uh, all the stuff in there. I think there's a bunch of game tray components. It plays two to six players, actually. Oh, um, and the game is actually really smooth. Uh, it deserves a ton of hype. It is well produced. I mean, obviously the box is big, but it's probably my Only one complaint. From players. It's not like it's very quick. Three hours. Wow. Very quick game. Yeah. Okay. What and you do is so simultaneous. Fantastic. Oh, beautiful artwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is an excellent, excellent game. Trey did a wonderful job. Good job, Trey. Really, really <laughs> like this one. And uh, there's. Uh, this, this game, I think, should be, like, blasted by a bunch of people because I had so much fun. It's like a hidden gem, but, I mean, it's not really. It, people, there is people, there's a not lot really of people rough. that, it's not really, I, I feel like it just deserves more hype than, it, than it's getting, and it is getting hype, don't get me wrong. Um, it just needs more. Not as much hype as my next game, but I think it needs <laughs> even more because that's how much I enjoy this game. I love the train theme. I like the steampunk aspect to it. I like the fact that it also attaches to another game that I really enjoyed. Um, from its uh, early onset, um, the Argent, the Consortium. That's one of her and favorite games. It has the hmm. same characters and theme and feel to it as well. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful game. I could gush about this for a long time, but I don't want to go too long about it. Uh, but I, I think you guys should definitely check it out if you haven't already. Imperial Spells and Steam. My third favorite for the year was a game called Antimatter. Yep, that's a good it one. It was a game where you are going around the solar system the board itself rotates along with all the pieces, so you are going from planet to planet using warp gates that you drop out of your ships in order to move around. Every time you would go to a planet, you collect your resources. Each of the resources had their own benefits, and if you collected enough of them, you can cash them in for massive amounts of points. And you can use those to gamble. 
Yes. Antimatter, A N T, because you're anting with those components that you gathered from the space system. So round one is moving around the space, and round two is you're playing Texas Hold'em with abilities. Those abilities can okay. come from the base portion of the game and the cards that you have, the character that you chose. It is pretty massive. Did you play that one? I don't think I did, actually. Yes, you did. You, it was you, me, Callie, and Michael. All four of us you play ball. in Texas Hold'em on this. There's a huge board. Well, my only gripe with that enough. game, really, I mean, other than the fact that it feels like two games in one, it which is definitely a two in one game, which isn't necessarily bad, but I can see how my I mean, some people might critique that, and I can also see that there's a huge board, so you have to find another space to play the Texas Hold'em portion because there's so much. Mm. We were just dropping it on literally on the main board because <laughs> it's so big. Yeah. Did it fund? Oh, uh, I'm not sure if it funded. I had. Not had the chance to look it double up, check, make sure so all of the specifics available on soon, it. Or but I we'll believe link, it I is will going to be dropping beginning of this upcoming year 2021. in 2021. It's okay. got some wonderful components. It's got great artwork, um, and you have two cool portions of the game. Either one would be fun, even if we just had one per portion of it, if without the Texas Hold'em or vice versa, I would still enjoy that one. I mean, obviously, it wouldn't be as long or as big as a game. Mm. It um, wouldn't, but it's so still you like so that. Much. You like both of them put together, Two and the idea of like working I, with your working with gathering resources and using those resources to play. Yeah, some games it doesn't bridge the two it styles well. Definitely a nice concept. I think Texas Hold'em style isn't as good. My opinion, something more like five, you know, five, five card, card stud, five card stud, uh, five card stud thank you, tongue tied. Mm. That would be better, in my opinion. Quicker less too, complicated, mm. much quicker, and it's just very straightforward and allows you to get back to the main core of the game. Which is what you really enjoyed, then. Which was a lot more attention-grabbing for me, because yeah. if you really thought about it and you can think of space in general, there's physics, there's all kinds of things you and can do. And that game do does a really it. good job with that, too. And yeah, I mean, you go to a planet, you can leave a planet, it gives you extra movement because you're leaving gravity wells. Literally all kinds of fun exploration and going around a system that's constantly moving. I don't see very many games that the board itself shifts along with all of the pieces that you interact with. Based on the gravity mm -hmm. and all yes. that. Yeah, that's really cool. We were on number, number two. 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 Who lost my, the two? You I lost, lost two. my two, so it is just you two. Okay. Are you guys ready? Oh, mine's a good one. I'm going to have to go first for number one, which means your number one's going to be most important, right? Well, mine, <laughs> uh, some people might be like, oh, come on, but it just deserves it. It's Gloomhaven, Jaws it's on my of list the Lion. Play. Everybody's been talking about it, so yeah. This is the Gateway Gloomhaven. I'm not going to say a gateway board game, but I will say the gateway Gloomhaven. It's what you pick up before Gloomhaven if you want, or if it's, uh, well, it's if you think it's a little, t if you think Gloomhaven might be a little too much for a certain group of people, this would be the one to pick. Really You're like able to actually play the game via a, <laughs> basically a, f a fold out um, booklet that is, you know, kind of like, looks like, it feels like a dry erase. Uh, I think, I think it is. I don't remember. No, no, it's just it's just a fold out and has like the sprues and whatnot. You can place your characters. It can be either two pieces of paper wide or just one. Uh, you learn the game as you go along. You improve as your scenarios improve or get more difficult. You level up. It's it's a great dungeon crawler. It's just like the game Descent, but it's got a lot more going for it. A lot more unique things that are attached to it. A unique combat system. The different characters you can find along the way. The characters you have. All of the investment you put in the character you feel when you go throughout the game. It is a hack and slash dungeon crawl where you're attempting to just defeat your, the, the enemies as they come along. And they definitely come along. And there's all kinds of crazy things you're going to have to do, deal with, with different quests and adventures. And of course, when you're done, you pack it all up and everybody has their own little things. And you can go ahead and play your next scenario. I think we got like eight or nine done with this one. Oh, wow. And we're already ready to go on to the number 10. And all we have to do, I remember where we are. I, as everything's written down. It's really well put together. The inserts are great. The artwork is beautiful. Uh, I think this is Isaac Childress, yeah, and it is by Cephalofire Games. I think it plays uh, two, one to four players. It's it's excellent. Uh, all all of the Gloomhaven stuff is excellent. Frosthaven and all that good stuff. This one here came out this year. It was a game that you can purchase at Target, which is also nice oh, wow. too. I think it's sold easy out. Easy, oh. I think it's sold out. But I, I think it's easily accessible. But okay. Uh, it was. I don't know if it is anymore. You might okay. be able to find it. I don't know if they maybe maybe they made a second printing or not, but. Uh, to no surprise, it's it was a huge game that tons of people backed. It, like f f Facebook board game, Facebook lit up like crazy when this game hit the stores. I was lucky wow. enough to get a copy early, which so I didn't have to go crazy and try and find one. 
and I was able to do a review for, for them and, and take a look at the game. But overall, a wonderful game. Great pickup. Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. If you haven't played a Gloomhaven before, this is the one to try out first. You guys hey, haven't played it yet, though, huh? I haven't. I have not, but the I fact that it sounds like soon. you can start and stop it during different points oh, yeah. is a nice thing. Well, so like 40, 40 minutes per, per little campaign, well, and then if bad. you want to keep going, you keep going. If you don't, you stop and you play again later. Yeah. Cool. Uh, only thing is, you probably want to play with the same people, but you yeah. don't have to. Well, that's what I'm meaning. Like, if you have a bunch of friends that you can only get together with so often, game like, like this would come it's in like, handy. It's like D&D, but you're just dungeon crawling. You're yeah. just fighting. Always yeah, a good DM doesn't have to like, build the scenarios and everything. It's already set up for you, so... Yeah. yeah. You're up. Okay, my number two is Reavers of Midgard. Ooh. Um, yeah, honestly, that plays like, two to five, two to six? I think something like that, yes. More than four, but... Yeah. Well, I think it's I two, two, it was two to six. It's a, it's a dice placement, but also resource management at the same time. By Gray time. Fox Games. Yeah, like and honestly, this is also my number one on my list. Oh no, oh, really? he stole yes, your it number is. one. Oh. We tagged in on another one. Okay. All right, tag like, team honestly, it up then. Yeah, I love playing this. It has the custom dice. I love dice anyway, those of you who know me. But I mean, this custom dice that you roll that are generating resources from the dice that then you can place at different places um, based on requirements and where you want to go. If you're going to be a, you know, a Viking ship just more aggressive and building lots of you know, fighters and champions and you're going to try and attack different villages to loot and pillage and plunder because you're Vikings, that's what you do. Um, or if you're trying to build up your own village, like you've got lots of options to how you want to build You can game. play aggressive, you can play compassionate, you can focus on your own stuff, you can try and take things that other players want. There's a ton of dice in the game, you use a ton of dice oh, yeah. in the game. Their resources, their value, they that give kind you actions. Of uh, yeah, there's just a lot that's going on. It's not super challenging to learn once you yeah. get through it a couple rounds, uh, but it's definitely more on the heavier side, like medium it heavy. Is, yeah, it is. It's a longer play too. I want that's to say got it's great like artwork. It I is long. The yeah. art on that. It's game. beautiful it artwork. Absolutely. All the components beautiful. are beautiful, high quality. Oh. Gray Fox does a great job with their games. This one is no exception to that oh, yeah. rule. And I like of the course, art too. good detail. Uh, there is a ton of game in there. There's a ton of replayability. There's a ton of cards. Um, yeah, actually, I wouldn't mind more in the so middle. Those ways. little, uh, the, the thing is, like ship cards in the middle. I would have mm -hmm. liked probably a little more of those, but mm -hmm. everything else was over extra. Oh, so, yeah. But yeah, the Vikings. <laughs> Not set collection yes. in the game. Yeah. Die yeah, yeah, depending on how you want to do it, like, you use so much versatility. Like, there's so much replay value, it's not even funny. And on each of the main turns, there were five different sections where you could literally choose. All right, I'm going to go. Five or six. Here. Like, you've got a lot of options. Yeah, it was a lot of different options, which allows you to sit there and go. All right, I'm going to be strategic. I want to start with this one. I want to get the resources here. I want to be able to build up. Yeah. And food, then get more warriors. Oh, but yeah. Even if you only choose one, you get the other options other players put your own play as well. He you likes to go into many. detail as though you guys have played the game. And if you have, you don't need the details. He's well, like, let me explain okay. to you an entire round. <laughs> no, but actually, you that can is, watch us play a live yeah. stream. Yeah, yeah we played we it on a live stream. And I believe technically it came out in November of last year, but eh, we mm. got it this year to review. So I, I guess... It was the end of last year or something. I guess it counts as this year. It's a, yeah. it's a rule break, I suppose. When it comes to the end of this video, it is still within that year marker so i'm gonna say it's an absolute still win of the 2020. It's and it's available now then yeah it is yeah hey, Rivers of check the links. they have a new game they came out too that we played online oh gray fox uh yeah. arcana rising arcana, yeah, arcana, yeah, arcana, arcana rising yeah, yeah. yeah was, i backed that one too oh, well there you go yeah see i told you publishers <laughs> just keep sending me them you'll at least guarantee to make your money a back few, if you're just good, from you better get a good game like honestly i don't back everything 90 percent but 85. <laughs> and did you have a number two? Now that my you lost your number one? This my is number, your number two one. was the Cowboy Bebop. My number one was the Reavers of Midgard. Oh, so you don't get them covered. number one or yeah. number two. That's wonderful. But they were already covered. Though, still? I do. Oh, it's not Reavers. No, it's oh. not. And, okay, Dungeon Drop was what number? Hmm? What was your number? What was your Dungeon Drop number? Uh, three. Okay, so he does that. I guess he will get, get to go last in the video then, apparently. Oh. He still has the one. <laughs> I don't know if this is a cool formula where we actually just announce when we lose our spots, <laughs> but it's kind of fun, I think, and it reduces the time, and you guys can talk about it during the, yeah. the session. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> but uh, other, well, because other videos are like, um, they, they'll announce the number three, they'll talk about it, another person will just sit there and go, yeah, that's cool, that's cool, and then they're like, that's my number one when the number one section hits up, and they'll talk yeah. about it again. It's are we just like, do honorable mentions then, or yeah, before we can do, do number one? No, nah, we'll do honorable mentions after. afterward. We'll finish okay. it up. My number one. Is going to be. That's a big box. Yes, it is. I say on by Tabula Games. Uh, these game. guys have made Mistea. They made Valserion. 
All the games are in the same universe, Perfect. and all the games interact with each other. You can use the components for all the games to play other games. Oh, wow. Miss Say and, and uh, Isan can be put together to play a cooperative game. Both of them are co competitive games separately. That's uh, great. They, I've never heard of that before. Damn. The artwork is one of my favorite styles of artwork, next to like Vindication. It is beautiful. It is. Uh, like just looking at that, you get a sense of like awe, wonder, and even a little bit of dread. These are you guys down here, <laughs> and the boss, the big colossus looking thing, who actually doesn't... He reminds me of Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah, he's not against no, you, but at the same time, he doesn't care much about you at all. He runs around and he smushes. You're trying to pull things out from under him to gather value. I can't remember if I played this or you're talking about it. Yeah, I have not played it. Yeah, depending on where you are, like you might not... If you've done anything to attract the boss's attention, but if you're in the wrong you. spot and he steps on you, it sucks. I mean, you're also probably going to likely go and try and gather resources from him. You're also gathering resources and whatnot, and building machinery on the board. There's little like alien critters that come around and try and mess with you that you have to kind of deal with while attempting to build more and more factories. When you build more factories, you gain more value in your actions that you can take. You also get a unique character. There's a ton of the characters in there. I played with the main four of my prototypes, but this one included a lot more. And one of them actually is a character that when you defeat the character, instead of it going away and having to respawn, you just take off her armor and she keeps fighting. Super oh, wow. cool, oh, wow. unique idea. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you're trying to build your character. While it has a basic character card, there's yet. also a secondary action, or secondary character card that's always ever changing every game. So your character might have the same base ability, but it's going to come with a secondary ability every Great time you play, play which gives a ton of replay value. Like I said, quality, artwork, miniatures, beautiful. Everything about the game as far as how it looks and how it feels is great. And of course the gameplay itself has got a little bit of that Euro, a little bit of that area control. You're working to deal with the Colossus, avoid the aliens, push them away, and you're attempting to build as much as you can while your opponents are trying to take over the, the area of Iseon, this like boulderous rock that's got a bunch of diamonds in it. I just, uh, this game was just very awe, awe evoking. Is that even a word? Awe evoking, A-W-E-E. -E. Uh, invoking. Yeah. I don't know. I sat there like, wow, this is really great. And the prototype oh, they sent was like, yeah, it was just, I was just sat there like, wow. And then I saw the cover when they, they bought the, because they didn't have the cover originally. Mm -hmm. And when I saw this when it came in, I was like, great art. That is such a great choice. Like, it gives you everything you want in a cover. You feel it. It's so detailed. But I just, I just love Iseon. What a cool game. What a great game. And the fact that when you, it comes with a competitive mode, if you own Masaya, and I say on, you can put, there's a little folder that gives you the rules and some other unique cards. You can put this and that game together, and then wow. you can play a new comp cooperative game. And if you have Valsarian, which is a deck builder, that boss can go oh, in the games. So, okay. Wow. That, that is very nice, the yeah, fact that a really company Not a lot of games do that. allows multiple of their games to be combined into one new level and completely change everything. Yeah. That Two to is five quite players, nice. 90 to 120 minutes. Excellent game, though. Yeah, I really enjoyed Heck it. Yeah. That was your, I'm sorry, number one? one. That was my last oh, one. Oh, so you're done? I'm already done. Oh, it's my, it's my number one? Oh, yes. I say, we say it's the best for last. <laughs> I, I had to drive him nuts. I, Let's I can't see. Help it. Let's see. Okay. Dead Reckoning. Oh, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. Because <laughs> I know kidding. you like the mechanic because I know you like Mystic Veil. Vale. Yeah, I do. The, and I've unfortunately not played Mystic Veil vale yet. I'm but. biased on this one anyway. It was hard. I, I, I just love John. He's such a sweetheart. So you know, cool guy. He know I like the way he taught us because he taught us with a very much tough love strategy. Like you know what? Okay, I'm gonna play full. If on by tough him. love you mean he stomped the living daylights out of us with no remorse while laughing at the yes. end. Yes. Yeah, tough yeah, love. Exactly. He, he, he always plays tough love. He's a wonderful mentor. Best way to learn, because then you can actually try and emulate his yeah. strategies. Like, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. I would normally to agree, but in the future. if you were playing against a Grandmaster chess champion, every game you're going to lose forever. So, you know, I yeah, mean, you it, should, you it does learn, go, though. there's a learn. certain <laughs> point of like good players that, you know, always want to play against better players well, so you'll did, get better. He help us with mechanics along the way, like, oh, no, you know, no, this be a little bit better play here. No, it's Not a lot much. of fun. You don't want to put somebody, bit, you know, I, I don't like it when the creators go easy on me. I want to know what the game's going to feel like when yeah. I'm fighting against players like, that are better. the real way this yeah, works. Yeah. Yeah. And on top of that, if you have a creator that actually goes that crazy on you from the get-go and you can figure out a way of turning the tables and beating them. He also respects us an opponent. Which I kind of like. So. He probably doesn't respect me as a opponent. He's, he just stomps me in every game. <laughs> space, space, Mystic Veil, Dead he Reckoners. Let's really talk like, about the game, though. No, he did compliment me on how quickly I picked it up. <laughs> this is a no. pirate game, right? Where I you... have a pirate theme, but what I really like about this game, this is it's kind of a deck builder, but card builder. Oh, yeah, it's a is, card builder. Yeah, it's game, a unique yeah. mechanic. I've not seen this in many other games before. I know it's in Mystic Veil, but unfortunately, card crafting one. system, I think is what yeah. they call it. 
Yeah, it is a mis- it's a mystic veil. It's an edge of darkness. Um, dead it's reckoners. And it might be in but one I like, of the Yeah, I like games. that mechanic. It's creative, so it also adds to a lot of replay value because depending what you buy, what AEG you specifically cards. makes those type of games where you actually. Oh, nobody it's, else? Nobody else. No. Oh, there is okay. one other game now. I think it's called like Portraits or something. It's where you're making like a portrait or something. That's. They kind of it's it's a different style of, of card crafting, but it's it has its similarities. Um, but in okay. general, AEG is the one that does it. Yeah, you and you start with a card that has a portion on it that it was going to give you a ben, a, an ability, and it then you can put it's more. Plastic card, really cool. Yeah, like, so it's, it's translucent, and yeah, depending what you slide into the sleeve, it adds components to the card. They either have other abilities, point building mechanics, attack building mechanics, all kinds of different. It's things. based on yeah. the Mystic Veil system, but it also has a board. Uh, that you're going to be moving around on yeah, with your you're sailing boat, around. Yeah, you're and pirates. you're fi- you're fighting different locations. You're trading. You're attacking your opponents, yeah, and the way you attack is actually kind of like Edge of Darkness in a way, because you're well, sort of. In this have, one, dice tower. you're dropping this. T- you know, you're dropping yeah. cubes in a dice tower, and they're going to fall in certain areas, and they'll score you points so that you do damage to your opponent. Where it ship. falls out, it's really cool. Yeah, and and that's a mix with other players' cubes and whatnot as well. Mm-hmm. And you're trying to sink each other, so. It's it's got a, it's got a, it's got an edge of darkness, a dice tower, and the card crafting system from Mystic Veil. Vale. It's got a unique aspect as far as moving ships around the board, gathering ports, controlling yeah. areas, like fighting the against pirates. Like it's really like a really cool theme that actually fits for what you're doing, where you're moving, how you're attacking. A lot of different whatever. options to choose from as far yeah. as where you put your cards and what you're trying to do in the game. Fun to play it. Oh and yeah. Unfortunately. I hate, I hate to admit this, but this is not available immediately right now. I think you can post back it. Uh, it was it. still open? I don't know. Probably. I, uh, I backed it. Um, it should be available soon. I want to say early 2021. Like within the first, let's say half a year, I think, off the top of my head. Moderately but, cheating then. Moderately. Yeah, Moderately. I got to yeah. watch you guys play well, that but game. It's a pirate it was a game. lot of, of fun I don't to watch. Cheat. There's no reason to fight fair in a pirate game. I'm pirates. Well, I just mean you're cheating because the game doesn't come out until next year. So you can't it's, use... <laughs> I played it this year. So pirates. you can't say that it's your favorite game next year then. That's the rule. Fair enough. Touche. A solid game though. Dead Reckoners is excellent. Um, yeah, if I remember. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I really, no, I really, really enjoyed that one. It would probably have made fun. my top five list, um, but I, I knew Josh was going to put on, put it on here. Of course. And I didn't want him to take away from my fame. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Well, there's a couple other games. Like, I, I want to try and give a variety of games for people to see what they're what they enjoy, and I feel yeah. like. All of our games, we had like you know, mixes and matches of most of these games are probably games that we've gotten to play. Obviously, we haven't played a lot. Some of the triple A style games that maybe other people I haven't, I haven't even played, Horrified, you know. So it's like I'm just talking from my experience with what games I have currently got. There's a ton well, of great you games out there. Dwarves of Elder Vale. I have not yet. It's not it, 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 technically, yeah, technically that was going to be on my list as well, but it's not here yet. Yeah. So I'm going to make an, a separate video for it at the in the year. But yeah, Dwellings okay. is my Honorable mention, okay. uh, which we'll talk about now. Dwellings okay. of Elder Vale uh, by Breaking Games. Um, Peter Vonda development on it. Luke Laurie did the design. I got to, to participate in the game a bit, which was cool. Doing live streams for them, play testing, and all that good stuff. Uh, I'm really close to the project in some ways, so I didn't want to like, you know, trying to be more conflict of interest. You know, but but it, it is a great game. I really really enjoy it. I didn't design it, so yeah. I can talk about the design. I can say it's fun. It's got I some played, really cool quality components. Really cool. A lot of my friends have the game. <laughs> I just don't yet, but it will come soon. And um, when it does, I'll, I'll have more to talk about it. But I really, really, really enjoyed the game. I've gotten to play. We have live streams and all kinds of great stuff. So mm-hmm. Dwellings of Elder Vale is my honorable mention. Another one is Everdell Expansions. All the Everdell Expansions are my honorable mentions. If you have Everdell, buy the expansions. They're a lot of fun. I personally really really like Everdell mm. and I can't see why anybody else wouldn't enjoy it as well and if you do or if you haven't played it by Everdell and then by the expansions all of them came out this year uh, those are my two though Dwellings of Eldervale and the Everdell expansions I know the two games that have very similar names mm. maybe that's why like I, they give me it, stuff good honorable mentions together uh, my honor mention is actually Liftoff Get Me Out This Planet, which not the original one. Pencil like, First Games, Eduardo yeah, Borat. 15, actually, originally. But the new um, deluxe expanded version came out this year. And go ahead and go to Edo's channel and subscribe. Um, and, um, yeah, actually, Edo I wrote plays. a review about this. It's actually on the, the page right now, the uh, blog. But it's a fast, really fun, easy play, easy to learn, definitely a family, you know, fun, family friendly game. And just, it's goofy and it's fun. And if you really pay attention to the theming, it's. 
it's laughable because these aliens are trying to get off this planet and they're using trampolines and a ladder and like you know, a very simple packs. game with a lot of unique oh, yeah. uh, replayability like because there's going to actually be these cardboard pieces that you can put in and put mm -hmm. out allowing Lots you to change the way you're trying to escape the planet it's just laughable and fun yeah, yeah, a lot of fun, a lot of craziness going on. More players is better. Yeah, I, I, would, right. I probably wouldn't play it two players, but... Well, I played it two players a lot. Oh, so. and you really liked it? Yeah. Okay, I don't know if I'd play it two players, which, I mean, it, it didn't make my list. Oh, it's um, heads up, I mean, that point, so... But I, I, I do think it's it's a fun game. I think it's a great gateway game, and I think it has a lot of great replayability, too. Mm -hmm. With a lot of cool, unique little... Does it have oh, a, yeah. a single-player mode, too, or something no, like there that? Is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, a lot of, there's a lot in that game, and it has high-quality components as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, Pencilverse games always does good stuff. Yeah, a lot of fun. You got any honorable mentions? I do not have an honorable mention for this year, but I'm pretty sure by next year I will have found a great honorable mention to add to the list. All okay, right. So no no I'm game we played on stream that you were like, oh, I enjoyed that one. Give, give somebody a shout out. There was a lot of games that I've played on stream, but a lot Throw of them also yeah, made combat. into my top five. Same Throw name, one, one game that you saw us play <laughs> that you didn't play that you thought looked fun. The one that I have not been able to play that I did enjoy watching was the Valiant Wars. Valiant Wars. Okay. There that you was go. one SMG I wanted games, to back. SMG games, Strange Machine games. Mm. I started backing it. It came off for a bit. I'm waiting for it to come back in so that way I can re-back it. It was a great, fun game to watch. It was one that I decided. I was like, you know what? That has definitely got my it's money. It's Mystic Veil, vale, but instead of card crafting, you're dealing with warriors are trying to gather more everybody is looking to try and keep going until they bust if they don't bust they can get more characters the characters in your deck are worth Crash points yeah, it's like a very light version of mystic veil vale without the card crafting hmm. um, with some other unique little twists and turns to it if you like mystic veil vale and you want something lighter something more gateway than valiant wars is what i would check out and if you have valiant wars you should buy mystic veil vale. You should buy Mystic Veil. Vale. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, okay. There you go. A good honorable really mention. So, yeah. I we played that game twice on stream. That's how much we enjoyed. Yeah, that I was, okay. I did not get to join you guys on stream. When it's that it's one a better was um, it's a better streaming game for sure. It's better for for an audience. Mystic Veil vale obviously is more of a solitaire game. It doesn't affect you. Don't affect other players. And in Valiant Wars, you do. There's things you can do to mess with players. Mystic yeah. Veil vale is kind of more solitaire. You're playing with people, but you're you're not really. You know, they they exist. They can take your cards that you want, but otherwise your deck is your own. Valiant Wars, you're like. Draw three cards. And you're like, I don't want to draw three cards. No, you have to draw three <laughs> cards. I just busted. Yeah, I made you All do that. Sucks. I'm so sorry. Bye bye. Yeah, it's some mean stuff like that. Uh, but overall, great list, guys. All those games yeah. I really enjoyed. I think that they are great choices for you guys. If you want to go ahead and pick any of them up, uh, some well, games from 20. It's home play games, our, so. our top very, 2020 list, for true. the most part, parentheses, one game in 2019, and like two or three that are probably coming out early 21, but you probably can still back them now. Yeah. Um, yeah, so th there you go. There's a list of games. I mean, I think we gave at least 15 anyway, there for so. you guys. Yeah. Um, what games were your favorite games from 2020? I'm sure Let's you guys played a ton of them Definitely. that we haven't played. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming on. And, of course. Uh, I expect to see you guys for more streams. And you'll be playing a lot more games in the future, I imagine. Oh, yes. Along with us playing some Dead by Daylight. If you play that, let me know. We'll, we'll play together. <laughs> and, I still haven't gotten to do that. I know. You know, watching you play De Dead by Daylight... At first, it was weirding me out. As soon as I got my hands on the controls, I'm like, this is nothing. Well, it's a high stress. Like, Get them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> highly engaging, highly stressful, but good yeah, stuff. High though. energy. Thank you guys so much. I will have another top five video for uh, the, the, what is it? The, the top games I've reviewed this year. I think we're going to do that. I think we're going to do a blog post of it. And we'll also have Brian's top five list, which will be right. on the website too. Our Christmas guide is still on the website. If you want to buy something um, for some loved ones on Christmas, it does have an affiliation link and it does help us out. Affiliations down below for all the games we mentioned. If they have one, if not, I'll send you a link to the Kickstarter. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing, seeing you guys, guys next time. time.